Good morning, everybody. Our church is packed this morning. <laughs> A lot of people on vacation. <laughs> anyway, good morning, and if you're ever in the Phoenix area, please stop by and worship with us Sabbath morning. I just love it. Well, uh, while I'm thinking about it, I should also mention that we have a fellowship lunch. We don't mention it too often, but all you guys are invited. Have some good food. All right. So uh, we should have our first hymn. Would our choir director come up? Genesis 1, 1, no, excuse me, 1 and uh, 2. In the beginning, God created the heaven and the earth, and the earth was without form and void, and darkness was upon the face of the deep, and the Spirit of God moved upon the waters, the face of the waters. So we bow our head. Heavenly Father, we're so thankful that we have, we have a, a hope that we can be with you and live with you and have peace. Thank you for all your wonderful things that you give us. We ask all these things in Jesus' name. Amen. My message today, I was thinking about the 4th of July, so I quoted, Oh, can you see? I'm sure all of you recognize that by the dawn's early light our national income. This is going to be a short sermon. We're going to enjoy our air conditioning in the fellowship hall. <laughs> uh, anyway, uh, I'm going to give a bunch of verses, and if you have a pencil and paper, maybe you would like to write them down. I won't read every one of them. So, we'll get started. Oh, can you see? Do you remember who wrote that? Francis Scott Key. He wrote about our flag 210 years ago. It's hard to believe it's been 210. That was in 1814. He was in the Baltimore Harbor, and he was looking at Fort uh, McKinney. In that night, while the British were pounding our fort, four people died. And we know that two men over, I guess they put too much gunpowder in the cannon, and the cannon blew up killed both of them. One of the bombs that the English were firing at us hit a lady to the right in half. And the fourth person was a black man. He was in that fort protecting us. Can you see? Can you see the wind? Can you see what turns our earth? What holds the planets in this space? Can you see germs? 
Can you see the atom? How about sound waves? Can you see them? Radio waves? How about the TV? Isn't it amazing? We can watch TV and see pictures from around the world. And we don't see how it comes, but it's our antenna and we get to watch. It's amazing. Jesus said, he made the unseen, the invisible. Can you see the north and south poles on our earth? Magnetic poles? Can't see it. We know it's there. Can you see the words coming out of my mouth? Hello? Did you see that? How about x-rays? Can you see x-rays? I thought about this one. Can you see time? We can see time on us, or people around us, but we don't see time. Can we see our God? Can we see Jesus? Or the angels? Sometimes we have scripture that talks about angels. Uh, they came to visit Abraham. And Abraham could see them. And they ate with him. But most of the time, we cannot see them. How about the Holy Spirit? Can you see the Holy Spirit? One time my uncle, this would be in the 1920s, was driving his car through a mountain range and he was driving too fast on one of the curves. And he hollered, oh God, help me, because he was going right off the edge. That car stopped right at the edge. God help me, thank God. When I lived in California, I had a little experiment like that. Our 14 freeway was closed. I decided I'll take the canyon road. It would be a little longer, but I can speed up on it. I tend to speed a little. Just a little. Well, I went around one of these curves, and the road was full of sand. I hit the brakes, and I spun around and around and around, and I started going backwards off the edge. All of a sudden, bam, the car hit something. Was, oh, thank goodness. Guess what was there? A telephone pole. Out there in the canyon, a telephone pole. I got out of the car and I checked the rear end and there was a dent. I said, wow. Went to work. On the way home, I said, I, I got to see that again. So I stopped. There was no telephone pole. I walked up and down that area there looking for a telephone pole. There was none. Now, I don't know if I said, God help me. I might even cussed a little because I was not really living the way I should, but I'll never forget walking that street looking for that telephone pole. There was none. I know the Holy Spirit or God, maybe an angel, stopped that car because I went over to the edge and it was a good couple hundred feet down. And no one would have seen that. I'd have been down there and in the car, probably dead. In the Bible, the scriptures clearly reveals the Spirit of God in a personal terms. We just read Genesis 1, 2. I'd like to read Psalms 33, 6, and 7.
He loveth righteousness and judgment. The earth is full of the goodness of the Lord. By the word of the Lord were the heavens made and all the host of them by the breath of his mouth. He gathereth the waters of the sea to gather and keeps them. He layeth up the depth in storehouses. God is powerful. Then I'm going to go to my third one, Isaiah 40. Verse 12, 13, and 14. Talking about the majesty of our Lord. Who hath measured the waters in the hollow of his hand and melted out the heavens with the span and knows of the dust of the earth and the measurement and weighed the mountains in a scale and the hills in balance who hath directed the spirit of the lord or being his counselor hath taught him no one can teach god with whom took he counsel and who instructed the lord and taught him the path of judgment, and taught him knowledge, and showed him the way of understanding. None of us, that's for sure. The Holy Spirit, He knows the things of God. That's in 1 Corinthians 2.11. The Holy Spirit searches our heart. 1 Corinthians 2.10. The Spirit also speaks to us. I've never heard the Holy Spirit speak to me, but I have heard and hear the Bible verses where it has. Acts 1, 16, Acts 8, 29, Revelation 2, 7. The Holy Spirit also shows us how we should speak to other Christians. That's Philippians 4, 6. The Holy Spirit directs he directs us. That's in Acts 8.29. Also 10.20, 11.12, and 16.6. The Holy Spirit guides us. That's in John 16.13. The Holy Spirit also hears us. I'm kind of glad he hears us. The Holy Spirit helps us. Romans 8, 26. When we're praying, the Holy Spirit groans and intercedes for us. I am so thankful for that one because sometimes when I'm praying, I, I feel like I'm not saying the right words to God. I want to say what's in my heart, and the words don't come out. But this, this year, it tells me in Romans 8, 26, He takes my words and groans with them and sends them to the Father. He intercedes for us. I love that. The Holy Spirit witnesses to us. Acts 20, 23. 
also Hebrews 10.15. The Holy Spirit convicts us and reproves us. John 16.8. There are some things that we can maybe do or have done to the Holy Spirit as humans, of Christians. We can grieve the Holy Spirit. Maybe when uh, we're doing something we know we shouldn't be doing, and we go ahead and do it anyway. He also can be blasphemed. That's in Mark 3.29. And when you blaspheme the Holy Spirit, it can't be forgiven. You notice of all the things that I've mentioned the Holy Spirit does, He can't save us. There's only one that can save us, and that's Jesus, our Savior. We as humans have a spirit. A spirit of man is in Proverbs 20, 27. The gifts of God to us. He gives us material things. He gives us food. He sends the rain. He gives us health. He gives us our sleep. And He gives us good rest. All of our needs are covered by our God. Talking about sleep, Proverbs 3.24 I'm going to read that one. I like it. When thou layest down, thou shalt not be afraid. Yea, thou shalt lie down, and thy sleep shall be sweet. Last night I was, I'm not a minister, you know that. I, I get nervous thinking about what, what, what am I going to say, is I going to say it wrong? Um, and I couldn't go to sleep. So I got up and I walked around the house and I checked everything and I was, okay, and I went back and I laid back down and I started to pray. I ask God for His sweet spirit, His sweet rest. All that nervousness and that worry just left, just like that. I went right to sleep. And that, uh, when I, I, I read that, I said, wow, that is so great. I'm going to turn to my next one. We must always ask for the Holy Spirit. In Luke 11 and 13, I'll read that. If ye then, being evil, know how to give good gifts unto your children, no, how much more shall your heavenly Father give the Holy Spirit to them that ask? All we have to do is ask, and He will send it. We must always ask for His Holy Spirit, but not to. 
two, the Holy Spirit, when you're praying. And number four, we don't want to make the Holy Spirit over our God. Remember the commandment, thou shalt have no other gods before me. That's singular. So when we pray, we should say, Our Father. And our Father will send the Holy Spirit to us. It's a promise. Let's pray. Heavenly Father, we're so thankful for your Holy Spirit, for all the things that he does for us, guiding us, directing us, helping us, on and on. I'm so thankful, and we each here are asking for your Holy Spirit to be with us, help us today to remember all the things we do and say to be to your honor and your glory. In Jesus' name, amen. We can have our closing song now. Be still my soul.